<laughs> All right, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving week. Always a, uh, a great time of year, obviously. We think football, family, and so much to be thankful for this year. Uh, really looking forward to an exciting week this week. Marshall head to JMU. Obviously, there's some implications there, and to talk about everything encompassing that game, we got Coach Huff here. Uh, how's everybody doing? Um, appreciate everybody being here. Um, as Grant mentioned, um, excited about the opportunity to celebrate Thanksgiving, uh, one of my favorite holidays, not for the food, well, the food too, um, but it uh, really gives us a chance to really reflect on all the things to be thankful for. Um, I know it sounds very holiday cliche, but um, truly thankful for, for this, this team, these guys in the locker room. Um, this community has been phenomenal this, this season. Um, you know, you just think back, and it's not over, I get it, but you think back to um, you know, the first game to Ohio State, to Virginia Tech, to App State, to where we are now. Um, truly, truly appreciative of the opportunity. It's been, it's been phenomenal. Um, still a lot of work to be done um, against a phenomenal opponent this week. <clears throat> um, we talked about it as a team. Uh, we got one more round. Um, you know, in, in boxing, you, you – you get to that last round, and, and, and you, you got to find a little bit more. And everybody says, well, you know, there, there's more to be had if you do what you need to do. <clears throat> For us, this is it. You know, we, we don't, we're not looking at the possibility of another game. We're not looking at the possibility of another week. Uh, we're, we're, this is the end of our journey, um, and we got to fight to create anything after that. Um, I think sometimes when you start looking at scenarios and – if this, then this, then you kind of open the door for distractions to come in and um, you, you don't really take it the way it is. So I told the team yesterday in the team meeting, this is it. This is the final round. This is the last opportunity we get as a family to go out and fight in this regular season. Um, if we fight and if we battle enough, then we'll get another championship fight. Um, but right now, this is, this is it. Coach Pruitt came and spoke to the team during the 75 – um, 75 week, and you know, he said, you know, every week you're playing for a championship, and you got to believe, um, and, and that's what everybody in this building's got to do. Um, that's what everybody in this community's got to do. Obviously, there's some distractions with Thanksgiving and fall break, and obviously getting closer to the end of the season, and you know, what what happens after this week as far as you know, is there a game, not a game? All of those things, you know, are are, are part of the distraction and the noise. Um, in this building, in this community, we got to rally behind. This is it. Everything we got in this round. Um, and when you play a team like JMU, um, who's had a phenomenal season, um, I tip my hat to Coach Chesney uh, for him to be able to take over a really good program that obviously had transition, lost a lot of really good players. Um, for him to be able to retool or rebuild, however you want to look at it, um, get all of those guys on the same page and playing for one another, um, and then to have the season they've had so far, um, a, lot of, a lot of respect for him and his staff and what they've been able to do. Obviously, from a player standpoint, a lot of challenges, uh, challenges you know, from a scheme um, standpoint. They're really f for physical. They're really fundamental. Uh, they don't make a lot of mistakes. Um, they are very consistent. Um, obviously, they've uh, played and won in some big games. You know, you think back to um, North Carolina, um, obviously, and then battling all the way down, you know, the rest of the schedule. So it's going to be a challenge. Um, obviously, we got to make sure we maximize today. Uh, we can't think about tomorrow. We can't think about Turkey Day. Um, we got to maximize today. So. Really excited about the opportunity. Really excited about the um, the team's focus. Um, they, 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 this team has done a really good job of, of managing, um, you know, each week, um, managing the adversity that comes with each week. Um, so we got to do it again this week. Talk about some of those distractions and um, you know some some chatter about potentially talking with other schools. Can you speak to those? Um, 
t- to that um, notion at all? And have you had contact with any other schools? And, you know, how are you managing that? Yeah, I think, you know, you've been here a while. The first year I was supposed to be going to Virginia Tech, I'm still here. Second year I was supposed to be going to Michigan State, I'm still here. Third year you wanted to fire me, I'm still here. I think it's just part of what happens. Um, I think every time there's noise, it's a positive. If you are married and you walk down the street with your wife and people don't look, you probably don't have a good-looking wife. That's the way I look at it. You know, we got a beautiful wife. Marshall, this football team, this community, people should be looking. There should be rumors. Um, there's no rumors of the teams that are out of the, you know, not going bowling. Their, their, their coaches' names, their players' names end up. Um, it's no different than we're starting to get these um, all-star selections coming in for our guys. I haven't given it to any of them because – Obviously, I don't want the distraction, you know what I mean? But there's bowl games, there's all-star games that are reaching out to our guys and, you know, want to know if our guys are going to play in them. Um, I think all of those are distractions. Um, but every year when you're good, it's going to happen. Um, I think that's part of it. I've talked to the team about it. They, they know our stance. Um, I think it's their um, credit to them that they've played well enough for our name to be in the rumor mill. I mean – I would really appreciate if everyone took all of that energy and focused on how do we get this team ready to play this week? Can we get to JMU to support this team? Can we get to one of the local restaurants and have a watch party? Can we, you know, um, one of the local churches here did a Thanksgiving dinner for our guys last night. That's the type of distraction I would rather deal with. Um, But it's part of it. That's why they gave me the big chair. Um, even though sometimes it leans a little bit, uh, but that's why. Um, but it, it's it's part of it. You know, every year we've been through it. Um, I've talked to our team about it. You know, no different than you know they're going to get. I mean, Mike Green's phone is probably um, it's probably dead right now from agents calling and solicitation of agents and where are you going to train and will you sign with me? Um, it's part of it. You know, JJ Roberts' phone is probably you know what agent you know where are you going to call? To be honest, all of our guys that have played really well, his phone's probably lit up. Transfer portal. Why don't you come play here next year? What are you going to do? You know, oh, I read in the paper that Coach Huff's not going to be there. Don't you want to transfer here? I I think that's just the world we live in. Um, I think what we talked about from the beginning with our team is, and I know it's, you know, uh, 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 the T-shirts out there, Marshall versus everybody. It's what it is. And everybody in our circle that, that, that considers themselves Marshall, we're, you're in it too. It's Marshall versus everybody. Um, if I was Coach Chesney, I would put out a, a, a rumor that Coach Huff has signed a contract to be the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Anything to distract the guys. You know, that's what I would do. Um, but it's part of it. Um, you know, um, I, I, I've communicated with our team. They know our stance. Um, obviously, I can't respond to every – tweet that goes out or every you know, that, that's that's me doing that to me puts more pressure on the guys of adversity and where it's at when I talk to those guys on Monday they know exactly where we are um, I wish the fans could be in the team meeting I wish the fans could be in the locker room you know after games because they would know all of that's just rumors so with that hopefully next year um, there's more rumors that means we're playing for another Sunbelt Championship, we're in the hunt. And then the year after that, I hope there's more rumors. And then at some point, I hope there's rumors that, you know, Keith is going to go to ESPN and be the sideline reporter because he's done such a great job of, uh, you know, reporting on the herd and, you know, so many touchdown calls, you know, that ESPN calls and wants him to do Thursday night, you know, and then he's got to make a decision, you know, do I get my hair cut on Thursday or do I get on ESPN? Uh, it's a tough decision, Keith. I know. It's tough, man. I like the hair, though. I don't know how to follow that, but uh, <laughs> let's talk about offense. So, what do you see specifically, starting with quarterback? You yeah, know, I think challenge yeah, the, the quarterback is good, man. He um, does a really good job. You, you can tell when you watch quarterbacks if they understand the system because as soon as the ball snaps, his eyes are in the right place. He gets through his reads. He gets the ball out of his hand quickly. Um, he runs better than you'd like, <laughs> you know, I, I know I say that a lot, but he runs better than you like. So you got to kind of have eyes on him. You got to have good wrestling discipline. Um, he is a bigger guy, so it's not just going to go down with an arm tackle. 
Um, and then also I think he's got really good command of the team. You know, they, they rally around him. When a play needs to be made, he steps up and makes a play. Um, you know, he's scrappy. You know, he'll get out of the pocket. And obviously now you're in conflict. Is he running? Is he throwing? He's got a good enough arm to put some zip on the ball down the field. Um, and then I think, again, I think the mastery or understanding of the system. You know, he doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Um, they're leading the country in turnover margin. They're like plus 17. Um, I know that's from a defensive perspective, but if you're turning it over on offense, it's hard to lead the country. So doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Uh, really good decision maker. Uh, winner. Won a lot of games. Um, tough. Um, it's going to be a challenge. Along the same lines, Coach, you, you guys have faced a lot of different kinds of quarterbacks. Aguilar from Appalachian, Zasko from Coastal, the kid last week. Is it something now you're just used to every week in this league? You got a, Usually you got a dual threat guy that you have to kind of try to subdue. Yeah, you know, I, I know – it sounds kind of – coach says the same thing every week. It's going to be a challenge. But every week is a new challenge, you know. And every week each quarterback, each team, each offense presents a little different challenge. Um, you know, at this level, because there's so much variance in what you see, you know, one week you're dealing with, you know, uh, an Aguilar from App State who can spin it and can move a little bit. You know, next week you're dealing with um, the young man from ODU who can really run. Um, this week you're dealing with an in-between. You know, you really – every week you kind of have to have new rules and new adjustments. Um, so that's what creates the challenge. If we were seeing the same guy every week, you know, a little bit – kind of think about it like the NFL. You know, you kind of see the same guy every week. Now, one out of, you know, 16 games you get a Lamar Jackson. Um, but you're able to build some continuity and reps and continuity and adjustments because it's, a, you know, kind of the same. Um, in this, this league – it's a little bit different every week. So one week the DNs may play one technique, the linebackers may play another. The next week you got to switch them. The next week you got to kind of make an adjustment. So that's what creates the challenge. We still only get, you know, four, four and a half days to kind of prepare for it. So it creates a little bit of a challenge. And you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you change so much that your guys aren't comfortable. So you got to find that balance. Coach, I know you touched upon Terry early on, uh, but you know this this week, you know, with the fellowship, family, friends, your faith, and and certainly football, kind of take us through the week with uh, what the you know this community is doing with these guys. Yeah, that's that's really they, good. I know they eat well. Uh, yeah, that's good really week. good. So, um, yesterday, um, Christ Temple Church here in town um, provided a Thanksgiving meal for the entire organization, staff, coaches, players, everyone. Um, so that was an opportunity for them to eat a little bit, uh, which was really good. We really appreciate them for doing that. Um, on Thursday, we will practice in the morning. So it's still a little bit of a game week, but, you know, a little bit of obviously Thanksgiving. Um, so we will practice in the morning. Um, Dalton Tucker, who is now obviously playing with the Indianapolis Colts, has sponsored the team Thanksgiving Day meal. Um, that was something that he wanted to do. If you remember when he was here, his family kind of started that tradition. Um, and he said, well, I got a few extra dollars in my pocket. He said, I want to make sure that tradition stays um, consistent. So he's going to sponsor the Thanksgiving Day meal. We'll practice in the morning. We'll finish up at about 1 o'clock. We'll be able to have the Thanksgiving Day meal as a team, as an organization. And then, obviously, those young men, the beauty of a place like Marshall, we have so many young men that are close, so they can get on the road, you know, at 1 o'clock, 1.30, and still get home for their family Thanksgiving. The young men who are on the travel squad, obviously, will go to some local friends' houses. You know, Osborne typically has a bunch of people over. If you remember last year, Owen Porter had like 80 guys over his house. Um, and then Friday, we'll, we'll head down to, to JMU. So you got to kind of balance both. You know, you got to kind of still prep, but um, you still want to keep some of the traditions and some of the family um, traditions and connections, you know, in line, but you got to find that balance. So we'll be done, you know, about one o'clock. Obviously the coaches will get to go home with their family and some of the players will go to the coach's house. Some will come to mine, um, you know, just to spend you know, Thanksgiving afternoon, watch a little football. Um, and then Friday we'll, we'll head down to go to battle. JMU's defense, you get huge, more sacks than any other team in the league, which directly affects the turnover part of it, I guess. But how do you characterize that defense? Those two defensive ends seem to get in the backfield a lot. Yeah, a lot of respect for, for, for Mr. O'Neill. Um, 
he, he's he's done a phenomenal job. I mean, you really look at um, he and Mike Green are probably the most disruptive um, D linemen in the league. No disrespect to anyone else, just off the top of my head. Um, and then they've got two really stout inside D tackles that are really powerful. If you guys remember, um, Emmanuel Bush um, played here a few years back, did a really good job for us, and he's transferred to JMU and had a really good career. Um, and he is, you know, one of those inside guys that is extremely powerful, um, you know, extremely strong, um, does a really good job getting off the ball. So what happens is they're able to create um, havoc and disruption with their front four. So they don't have to add guys to the box. They don't have to add guys in the blitz as much. So now you can kind of put more guys in zones. You can have backers flow over the top more. Um, it keeps your defense a little more um, consistent when you don't have to find a way to create a pass rush. You don't have to find a way to create um, tackles for loss. When those four guys up front can do that, um, it, it helps you out, which helps their back end. Um, they've got a corner that's doing a really good job in the turnovers. Um, number three has done a really good job of playing the ball in the air in the deep part of the field, plays with a lot of energy. Um, and then the other thing that you really see with their whole team, um, they play together. You know, you can look at games where things are going really well and they're all fired up on the sideline or um, playing their tails off. And then you look at games where things aren't going well and they're still fired up on the sideline or coaching each other up. Um, that's a testament to Coach Chesney. You know, he's developed a really good culture there. Um, and I think when you really look at the team, you can tell they're, they're playing for each other. You know, obviously they've got some good individual efforts and individual players, um, but they're really playing hard for each other, which is which is a huge um, compliment to them. You know, this matchup has been has been fun the last couple of years. Um, how fun is it to have it at the end of the regular season? Because the last couple of years it's been it's kind of fallen in the middle. But um, you know, with the the implications of this game, you know, how how fun is it to have you know, kind of a, a close rivalry game at the end? Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be fun. I mean, anytime you're playing meaningful football in November. Um, it's fun, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, we talked about it this summer and we kind of went through the schedule this summer before we kind of got into, into the season and just kind of said, Hey man, let's make this game for the championship, you know, and that was just kind of a, you know, in the season, the right way. I didn't pick the schedule. Um, but you know, that was the motto, just kind of do everything we need to do throughout the season to where we get to the end and we got one more round, you know, just let's, you know, find a way. And then obviously, um, they do a phenomenal job with their game day atmosphere always up there. You know, they, they do a really good job with that. You know, it's um, ESPN, you know, you, 8 o'clock. I mean, it's what you play for, you know. Post-Thanksgiving, you know, everyone's going to be watching. Uh, this is what you play the game for, you know. And, and, and we've got to do a really good job in preparing all week so we can go put out our best effort. Um, but anytime you're playing meaningful football in November, it, it, it's, 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 it's important. Coach, looking at this five-game run you guys have been on, is there any time at all for all of you to just kind of say, man, this has been fun? You, your kids have shown character. There have been a lot of close games, but uh, there's some positives to think you about. You know, man, I, I, I have had, and this is not coach speak by any means. I told the team this um, maybe two weeks ago. I have had the most fun coaching this group of guys that I've ever had. And I've won a national championship. Won a Big Ten championship, coached a lot of NFL players, coached in some big rivalries, stadiums rocking. I mean, but this has been the most fun I've had with a group of guys in my 20-plus years of doing it. And that's no knock to any other team I've been on. But these guys, they, they've done everything we've asked them to do. Um, they've done it with the right attitude. It hasn't been pulling teeth. It hasn't been perfect. Um, there's been ups. There's been downs. Um, guys have bought into the culture. Um, you're talking 40 new guys that have bought into what we've asked them to do. Um, and and I, I say it all the time, like in that locker room after a game, and I know you guys get, you know, some clips of it with Rev and, you know, you just get p bits and pieces of it. But the, the joy and excitement these guys have is pure. It's not tied to NIL. It's not tied to, um, you know, because we transferred. It's not tied to – you know, some great um, achievement. It's tied to a group of guys that love each other and are playing their tails off. And it's, it's good for me. It's interesting for me to see because it started as 40 new guys and a bunch of old guys. <laughs> it was kind of like, 
I don't know if this thing's going to gel. It's kind of like you get stepkids and you're like, all right, go play. Let's see if anyone punches anyone. Um, but they've, they've come together. We challenged them to get to know each other. Uh, we told we, we challenged them to get out of their comfort zones. You know, um, I, I, I talk with Ozzy all the time and, you know, he was one that struggled with, you know, do I come back? You know, a lot of my friends have, have moved on. He's been here a while. And he said the other day, man, this is the most fun I've ever had. I'm spending more time in the locker room. Like I've made relationships with guys that probably if I was walking down the street, I would have just kept walking, you know, no disrespect, but just, um, you know, he, he's created another level of friends. Um, he's seen Marshall at the top and the bottom, you know, from his time here. Um, you know, he, he represents something that, you know, we can't necessarily put on a piece of paper, which is what this community, what this school is about. And that's being able to come here, have an unbelievable experience, chase your dreams at the highest level, um, basically marry into a community that will embrace you, marry into some traditions that will embrace you. Um, and, and I couldn't be more excited for this group. Obviously, don't, don't get me wrong, we got to go play well Saturday. This ain't to feel good. Brady Bunch, and they just going to let us walk in there and get pat us on the back. Um, but we, we, we should enjoy it on the way. You know, everybody knows the task. Everybody knows the task is hard. Um, it's going to get harder. Margin of error gets smaller. Um, you know, taking care of the ball, executing, playing discipline, all those things. Um, but I, I think we should enjoy it on the way. I hope the fans, and I, I believe they do, but I hope they truly have appreciated this group of guys. We won't get them back. That's just the way college football is. I mean, regardless of you know whether guys got eligibility or not, this particular group won't be the same. So we could have the exact same. Ozzy's gone. He's out of eligibility. We're not going to get him back. Um, so I really hope that they have um, truly appreciated this group of guys. We're not going to get Mike Green back. Love him to death. I would love to have him back. I mean, it's just the reality. Does that make sense? So I really hope, and sometimes you kind of just, you know, you cheer and you – you really, it, it passes by. You know, everyone told you guys when you were in college back in 1932, Keith, um, that, you know, the, these four years go by fast. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then next thing you know, you blink your eye and it's gone. Um, I told these guys when they got here in June, this six months is going to go by fast, man. It seems like we were just in the weather delay at Stony Brook. Like, literally, it seems like that was last week. And here we are sitting on the edge of, you know, the last game of the year. So, um, we got work to do, and I trust me, I'm not giving the farewell. This is, you know, ride off into the sunset and get our butts kicked, you know, speech here. I'm telling you, on the way in the grind, on the way into preparing for a really tough game, we're going to enjoy each other so that when we get there, we can go to work. Well, and Keith looks good for his age. If you yeah, not bad. Not in 32. Yeah, that's okay. Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, s s some of those guys that, that got banged up uh, without asking if they're going to play or not and being accused of working for FanDuel, um, just how difficult will it be to keep them off the field if they're itching to play and, and trying to work back to, to get to that point? Yeah, I mean, we've been blessed. Uh, I said it, you know, back in, back in the preseason. If we can stay healthy, we had a chance to do something special. Um, the guys that were nicked up, banged up, are eligible to play or are – good enough to play I mean everyone I mean my back hurts you know in week 13 you know I mean so um, but no 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 one who hasn't been out there can't be out there if that makes sense now today's Tuesday probably you said that we'll probably have a outbreak of the chicken pops or something but um, but no to answer your question you know we, we've been blessed obviously um, we got to keep playing more guys because you can't, you know, I mean, you can't take every snap for the whole season. But um, we're probably the healthiest we've been in four years in the last game of the year, if that makes sense. Could you and, and brag on yourself? Could you just talk about how far this team has progressed from that first game to now? I mean, the growth and, and yeah, yeah, I'll brag on myself. It's the guys in the locker room, it's not me. It's the guys in the locker room. They have busted their tails. I, I said after. I've said after wins and I said after losses, the guys execute it. And typically we execute when we have really good weeks of practice. Now we've made some mistakes and I mean, I still love them, but it's, it's not me. It's not, you know, Coach Daigie that's doing a phenomenal job on the offense or Coach Seymour. Yeah, we're all pulling the rope in the same direction. It's the 105 guys in the locker room. It's the leaders that sit in here every Monday at two o'clock and we address, you know, what the week's gonna look like. And we hold them accountable. 
and they're the ones making sure guys run off the field. They're the ones making sure guys tuck their shirt. They're the ones making sure guys are in the meeting five minutes early all year. I, I'm just I'm just blessed enough to be along for the ride. I, honestly, I, I really am. You know, um, I tell them all the time. I got the best seat in the house on Saturday, man. I get to go watch you guys do what you do. So yeah, I mean we've had you know it, it, we've come a long way, but it's them. You know, um, we were talking as a staff the other day. We've been in programs after that Georgia State loss. We've been in programs that could have took a left. These guys took a right. It was the players. It was the players. We, we've been in places, and I've been in places in coaching where something that devastating happened at the end and all the backlash you get from it. Whoosh, I'm out of here, man. I'm going to the league. I'm, I'm getting ready for the draft, man. You know, if they'd have called this play, you know, we'd have did this, man. The next thing you know, you lose two. You lose three. I've been in it last year. You drop one. You drop two. You drop three. Next thing you know, you're on the slide. The kids in the locker room made a decision. They made a decision that that one game, one play, one 56 seconds wasn't going to define us. And I told them, once you guys make a decision, there's nobody that can stop us. Not coach, not outside noise, not anyone. You guys make a decision that you're going to be able to do what you need to do the way you need to do it, the way it needs to be done, and do it that way every day of the week, and then go out on Saturday and execute. They made that decision. I, my, I tip my hat to these guys. Um, it's them. It's not, not Coach Huff. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm bragging on myself because I happen to be behind them, if that makes sense. Um, but they made that decision, and I'm so proud that they did. Um, because it, it, it's, it's paid off for them, and hopefully it continues to create value for them long beyond this season. Um, they'll, they'll remember this season you know, for the you know, rest of their life. They'll remember the adversity they went through, and as we all know in this room, you know, adversity is going to hit in life and maybe something that they went through this season. There's a lot of stories that obviously um, you can't necessarily just you know, put out in, you know, in the social media world or in the media world, but these guys have been through a lot. And they've battled. They've showed up every week to represent this university, uh, represent this community. Um, so, yeah, when, when you say brag on yourself, I will. It's them. It's all them. Anything further for Coach Huff? Well, thanks, guys. I hope everyone uh, has a phenomenal Thanksgiving um, week, Thanksgiving day. I really hope we all take an opportunity at some point this week to – Thank the good Lord for um, everything we're blessed enough to have, um, everyone that's around us that we're blessed enough to have and be a part of. I'm thankful for you guys, um, you know, covering our guys, not necessarily me. I just happen to take the bullets. Um, but um, I'm thankful for you guys for what you do. Um, I'm thankful for this team. I'm thankful for this community, the administration. Um, none of this happens without the resources and the um, the, the, the avenues for it to happen. So I'm thankful for that. Um, hopefully everyone gets a piece of sweet potato pie, gets in the car, comes to Harrisonburg, and turns out the purple Duke rain with uh, Kelly Green. So go herd. <laughs>